Hey YouTube. Okay, so I know I said that I was going to be doing, making lots of videos because I was off school for the summer, but I guess I lied because I got like two weeks and then I go on vacation for two weeks and then I have two weeks. So I got a total of six weeks before I go back to school. I haven't done a whole lot in the time that I have had off. Um, I have made a few little things. Um, I got into clay. I've made a couple clay charms. Here's one. Oh, I have the other one too. This other one I found on Pinterest by um, Planner V made it. So I copied it. Craft lifted as we call it. So those were what I made. I've made recently, um, anything else, anything else? Not really. I've been doing a lot of TV watching instead. I miss TV while I'm in school because I barely ever watch it. But anyways, the whole point of this video today is <coughs> when I, uh, when I showed this, my little charm's upside down, this, uh, Fodori that I made by myself, um, <clears throat> excuse me a couple people asked me to show how I did it so that's what this video is is I'm going to show how I made this because it's a no sell <coughs> excuse me sorry I did want to sew the edges I wanted to put just a seam on the edge just mainly for decoration but um I have one of those little hand singer sewers that are made just for like touch-ups basically and this was just too thick for it to go through so, showing you guys this. You'll see right here, I'm trying to get it flattened out because this stuff's curled. But this right here, all this is, hold on, grabbing the package. This is craft text. And it's paper that is actually fabric. It's craft paper fabric. <clears throat> like you can wash this in the washing machine and when it comes out you can iron it flat and stuff like you can do all sorts of stuff with this and I picked mine up at Hobby Lobby and the um, price on it was $12.95 I used the 40% off coupon on it got it a lot cheaper couldn't tell you how much it was exactly because I don't want to do the math right now and it was a while ago that I bought it so it was a long time it was well over a year ago that I bought it so what I did, it comes in a big roll, big roll, this is my second one I've made and this is what I have left, so it's a good amount, um, let's see, does it say 19 inches by one and a half yard roll, so there, there you go, so God, I'm knocking everything over now. Ugh. So anyways, um, I like, I, I wanted mine larger so it could fit more in it because as it expands this way, it'll take away from the length. And um, so I did a large one. Like when this is opened up all the way, like this, this is 12 and a half by nine and a quarter. Oops, 12 and a half by nine and a quarter. And um, so that's what you cut this at. This, the, 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 this gets a little bit bigger because of the fabric over the edges, but not much, not enough to say. So I cut this to 12 and a half, 12 and a half long by nine and a quarter high two of them. Now if you don't mind your raw edges you could just do one. I also like I like two because it makes it to where I can get that like sewn looked edge. See how you can kind of see that there's two? I just I don't know I like that look and um, I also like it makes it a little bit more sturdy whereas one would be if you like yours flimsier one would definitely work. work. You know, just enough to have it as a cover. Because I know most people take the inserts out when they write in them. I do anyways. So this little thing's basically just a holder. So, okay. Cut. 
them, 12 and a half by nine and a quarter. And I couldn't find an owl fabric at my Joann's that I liked a lot. Well, I found some cute ones that were like back to school, but not something I'd want to carry. But I did find this. Woo -woo. So it's like got all sorts of artsy fartsy stuff on it. And then it says Crea creativity is messy and I am very creative. So I thought that was cute. And I actually, I got a yard of it. Not realizing how much a yard is because I don't do a whole lot when it comes to fabric normally. And um, so yeah. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> so I'll be able to make a couple if I want to. So what I'm going to do, I haven't 100% decided yet if I'm going to layer some white fabric on these. Because with this one, I did. I put a layer of white fabric down on top of the craft text because this was so white. Um, if I'd have just put it on top of the black, it really dulled it. I don't have any of the leftover of this right near me so I could show you. But like it, you know, you see the black coming through it so it's not as vibrantly white. And like this doesn't have a whole lot of white to it, but I feel like if I don't put the white fabric behind it that these colors are going to dull down. And now that I say it out loud, I realize I'm going to have to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some white fabric and then let's see, am I going to use fabric glue or not? I don't know. But let me get my white fabric and I'll get it at over here and um, then we'll go from there. So I'll be right back. Alright, All right, I'm back. And if you just heard me go, R, -r ignore it. I just thought that the camera was already recording, but then it looked like it wasn't, but then it was. So I was like, what ups? All right, so this is just some white fabric. Sorry, I'm knocking stuff over again. This is just some white fabric. Um, when my husband and I got married, we were going to um, make our own pillow for the ring bear to carry. And so we'd bought this with some blue stuff and some other stuff. But then I, um, when we were ordering our flowers, the florist was like, how old is your ring bearer? And we were like three because it was, it's my husband's son from his first marriage was our ring bearer. And she was like, oh my God. She's like, have him carry um, a teddy bear and wrap a ribbon around the teddy bear's neck and tie the um, rings to the ribbon. And it was an adorable idea. So we found a blue bear because our colors were blue light blue and dark blue basically because my husband and I were both active duty Air Force and my husband was wearing his dress blues so um yeah and then I chose light blue because blue is my favorite color anyways um so we didn't end up using this fabric and stuff so here we are eight years later and I'm finally finding a use for it um oh and by the way my son um he still has that teddy bear. He won't let us get rid of it. That is like his favorite thing. I mean, even though he's 12 and all that, he still just likes to have it around. It's kind of cute, I think. So I've decided to go the same route I did with the first one. And I'm going to use the fabric glue, possibly. Okay. I thought maybe there wasn't anything in or that it was... Um, uh, like hardened or something. So what I'm opening is just a package of baby wipes because I use my hand or my finger to smear this around. And uh, I want to have baby wipes handy to clean off my fingers. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe I won't be using this. And I put it on the folded up side so that way when you lay it out and you put heavy stuff on it, it starts to help it lay flat. Alright, um, what else do I have? I have Elaine's tacky glue. That might work. Is 
This is just not wanting to come out at all. Okay, here's what we're just gonna squeeze the heck out of it. Sorry, I know you can't really see what's going on, but I'm just ugh, folding the bottle over to get something to come out here. And then I'm just gonna smear it around with my fingers. Yeah, really, I don't know what else you'd use besides fingers because this stuff is thick and gummy. And I probably should have a window open because it smells bad. Oh God, come on. I don't think I'm gonna have enough of this stuff. So we're gonna end up improvising. I hate the way this stuff spreads. I hate everything about this stuff. So, you know what we're gonna do? That does not clean off your fingers with a baby wipe either. I did not know that. All right, gosh. So unprepared, guys, and I'm sorry for that. All right, so what I'm gonna do instead Now I got it stuck all over the place here. I'm gonna switch to some call-all, call-all, whatever you call it. Because this stuff is strong as can be and it's meant for everything. I will show you the bottle here in just a second. Whoops, wrong side, I'll have to get that off. Oh, my fingers are glued together. That's so much fun. So, covered it with glue. Now we're just going to lay it flat. Push it down. I got glue everywhere, guys. It's like literally everywhere. All right, so this is just a baby wipe. Like I said, this stuff is a paper fabric, so it can get wet and it just dries and goes back to normal. Sorry, I have so much glue on my fingers right now. I'm making a mess on the floor with it. So this is the glue I ended up switching to. I call it Colol, 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 I don't know. And please refrain from the comments of, <laughs> you should know how to say it before you use it. Cause let me tell you what, there's a lot of things I don't know how to pronounce that I use. So thanks. I don't always do the best with pronunciation. Wow. I have um, that gel nail polish on and um, something that I just used just like ate the nail polish. So I don't know if it was the tacky duke glue or the call la 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 glue but um be fair warned if you you know have pretty nails or whatever you might want to go a different route or wear gloves Ooh, that totally seeped 100% through and is all over my cutting mat this is gonna be a nice mess to clean up but moving on I'm gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing using the same glue. Still gonna use the call all glue because this fabric glue, I hate it. It's too thick. I don't know what it, how you would even begin to use it to be honest. Um, I'm gonna use this glue, if I can stop throwing stuff around, 
to do the same thing with this other piece. Again, I'm going to lay it like this so it helps to start holding the shape. I was just going to pull this up and do it on camera, but my iPad is right there. And I don't want that leaning against my iPad now that I know it's seeped through. So I'm actually going to um, move this down. I got an extra old cutting self-healing mat that I'm going to lay on the floor and then I'm going to let it do it on the floor and glue it on. Then I got to take my son to therapy. So I'm going to let this sit for a while and just dry. And then I'll be back to show you what's next. So when I come back in just a second, all this is going to be glued and dried. Yeah, that glue really does just, it eats up that gel nail polish. So, okay, hang tight. Okay, so it's been a while, but I'm back at this. I did a few things off camera real quick, just so to speed this up. <clears throat> so when we left off, I was gluing the black pieces to the white fabric. Now I know this looks ugly and the backs look ugly, but they're not going to be seen. So, I mean, this might get seen if you have a really light fabric. So I might, I'd do it a different way. I don't know how, to be honest. I don't know what you would do different. But um, this looked the same when I did this one and you don't see it. So, I'm um, not sure on that one, but I'm happy with the way it looks when I'm done. So, I also went ahead and I cut the fabric that we're using. And um, these are nine and a quarter by 12 and a half. And I cut the fabric at 10 and three quarters by 14, which gives me about three quarters of an inch around, three quarters of an inch around the outsides. And so then I'm just going to center it the best I can. And then I'm going to trim off a little bit on the edges. Now, on the other one, I rounded the corners and did it a little bit differently, but I don't want the corners rounded on this one. So I'm, that's why I'm cutting off a little bit on the edges here. Um, so that it folds over nicer. So then I put score tape, regular old score tape around the edges. Paper crafters will know what it is. If you're not a paper crafter, it looks like this. And I used a half inch. They make them in all sorts of sizes um, from an eighth of an inch, I think is the smallest. I'm not sure, maybe it goes to a 16th, but that would be really small. So eighth of an inch all the way up to like two or three inches five inches I mean they make even make sheets of it so um, so yeah uh, I would if I had anything bigger than a half inch I'd be using it on this but I don't have anything bigger than a half inch so I am using what I got so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull all of these off and then just like if you're making a mini album wrap it around and glue it down and then I rotate and I'm going to do this side and I'm going to stretch it a little bit to make sure it's good and tight and then just lay it down now when we get to these corners what we want to do just fold the corner in just like you again just like you do while making a mini album and fold it down and what I'm seeing right now is man it is hot in my craft room I just ironed this fabric by the way too so just so y'all know you want to iron it straight um, especially if you've kept it folded up at all which I had. And I'm just putting a little piece of score tape in here because I'm noticing now that this is folded over, there's nothing to hold the fabric down over here in the corner. And where's my... Yep, and 
it doesn't want to. Need gonna just need something to peel the backing off. There we go. So push that corner in and then lay it down. And if you need more tape anywhere, just add it. I mean, that's all you got to do, right? If you notice it's just not laying down the way you want it to, just add a little more tape. That's all I'm doing right now. Um, come on, baby. There we go. There. So that nicely rounds out those, or not rounds them out, but finishes them. Oopsie. Forgot to push it in. <clears throat> but that's okay. We will fix it. Um, I don't want to bring it in too close because if I forget to zoom it back out as I'm moving around, you guys won't see what I'm doing. that in more. And this score tape you can layer it on top of itself. It's uh it's some really sticky stuff. There we go. Oh man. Mm. I don't know if it moved on me or if I cut this corner just a little too close. What is that? Oh man, it's bubbled. But what I can do is iron this and it'll loosen the glue probably a little bit. But that's where it's bubbled underneath. I'm not so sure I would use the call all glue again. Um, if you do, you definitely want to have it on a surface that you don't care. If you get glue all over it. Um, right now I'm trying to figure out how I can get a little more fabric on this corner. Uh, sugar. This is okay, you guys are seeing a mistake in progress. I'm going to try just to undo, leave that one top edge up there okay. Just undo down here and shift it just a little bit. We'll see if it works. But yeah, as much as I love the call all glue for crafting and whatnot, it, uh, It definitely leaked through. There. All right. I'm just putting some more tape down just because where I peeled it up, not quite as sticky anymore. But not a huge deal because you're not going to see this. This is going to be on the inside. But yeah, that call all glue leaked through really bad. Um, and like I was, I could feel on this, there's some bumps on these. This one, not so much. This one apparently has one big bump. But I'm going to try ironing it to see if maybe that will loosen the glue up a little bit. I just hope it doesn't make it seep through. 
Score tape is some st sticky stuff when you can't even get the backing off of it. you in and over. So there, that fixes that side up. So yeah, basically mine just shifted on me a little bit. And if you have excess and you don't want to tape it down, um, you could always uh, trim it off. But my luck that I have, I would trim it off and I would trim it too close or something. So I'm just going to glue it down. So there you have it. There's the first one. So anybody who might be a slow learner, because I know not everybody can watch one and be like, oh, hey, that's a, I know exactly how she did that. Let's roll. We're going to do the other side in real time as well. So it'll be a long video, but oh well. So there are some bubbles. Like I say, I'm going to iron it and see what it does. But so we have one. Blah, blah. Okay. So once again, center it. The best you can. Trim a little off. Peel this stuff off and get folding. Oh god, I just knocked over a whole stack of washi tape and now it's flying everywhere. Jerks. Oh gosh. Hold on one second. I just don't want to step on them or roll over them or ew like that. Have them pick up fuzzies from my floor. Yep. I don't really have a whole lot to talk about. <laughs> Sorry if I'm disappointing. Um, headed off to New York soon to visit family. That's kind of a cool thing. Um, Now see, I just noticed that this has already shifted on me just a slight bit, so I'm just shifting it back. To make sure that I have enough, now see I'm realizing I have a lot at this edge for folding over, so I'm just going to peel this back up. Shift it a little bit more. Yeah. Now this might affect if you're just shifting like that. If you have um, a pattern, uh, speak words, carry a pattern <clears throat> fabric that you know has got like specific line details and stuff like that where like okay like pinstripe you would want them to be straight you know and so I mean I don't know if me shifting it if I'm off or what chevrons you would want to kind of
kind maybe you want to be straight. I don't know. It could be kind of cool with them all funky and wonky. But if you're using a fabric that um, has lines that you want to make sure stay straight, then um, I would suggest maybe putting some um, score tape on this side in here for when you lay it onto the paper so that it holds it straight. But this one's a very creative uh, fabric and it's not, I don't feel like it's meant to like have to sit an exact certain way, you know, as long as you have it like this so that the words are upside right. But yeah, so I would um, use something to tack it so that you know it's on straight. All right, let's hope there's, looks, appears to be enough there. Yeah. All right. There. So there's another one done. Voila. Now, all right, I'm going to pause for a minute and I'm going to iron this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I ironed it and like while ironing it, I, it was hot, but I was smoothing it with my hand afterwards and that bump is gone. Um, it does warm up the glue, but the glue doesn't seep through. And the only way I know it warms up the glue is because I could smell it, but it didn't come through or anything, so we're all good. Now, also off camera, I went ahead and laid, this is gonna be my front cover and I need to make sure it's laying properly. So that is, this will be the top and this is the bottom. And I just outlined it with score tape and then filled it all in in the center. Now this is the part where I say if you have the thicker score tape, like an inch or sheets of it, this would be where you would want to use it. Um, whew, definitely is warm in here when you get ironing and it's really humid here. and. Uh, Our upstairs like we need to we're gonna redo the insulation in our house hopefully next year um, so that it helps keep the AC aired in the cool air in so all right so this is definitely the top that's going to be the inside sweet and I mean, it doesn't matter what's your top and what's your inside. Like I chose this for my outside, or I mean, it doesn't should, I meant to say it doesn't matter what's your outside and inside. Um, like there's no like, oh yeah, this one has to be the top. I just chose this one because like when this is folded in half, um, this will be the front cover. So it'll be a nice clear picture of the quote. Whereas this one would have been this had been the front, this would have been and it's cut off there, whereas this one's not so much. So, now it's just peeling all of that score tape off. And the other trick is though, is um, flip that like that, is making sure that you line them up because this score tape is very sticky and it is going to grab right hold of it. Um, so it's not very forgiving. I mean, I've been able to pry it apart once or twice, but um, but it's not real forgiving. So try to get it right the first time. And what you saw me, this is just a bone folder, a Teflon bone folder. Teflon? Yeah, I think that's what they're... 
and I was just smoothing it, making sure that, um, pressing really hard, making sure that the score tape was uh, really grabbing a hold of that other cover. So. This is boring. I'm sorry. And I'm not. I hate trying to speed up videos and then have parts where they're not sped up and I'll get better at it one of these days but for today you'll just have to watch me peel score tape so I don't know well of course you'll remember because you're watch probably watching this all one day but it was like a week ago when I started this at least and I had my nails painted blue and um, if you remember the uh, glue really messed with my nail polish and if you look right there you can see part of my blue nail polish so to line these up the best you can possible I try to start with like standing them up it's not going to work for me today so create a V Put my fingers. There. And press firmly. It seems to have all lined up pretty decent. Trying to get the loose little threads that fell off after cutting. So we officially have the outside done. And then just go around the outside edges and press really firmly. Um, just to make sure that it got all together because you do have bumps like on the edges right here where you fold it in and you just want to make sure they get contact in every spot. So and that's all I'm doing right now. All right then comes folding it. trying to buckle on me. You know what, I'm going to hit it with an iron and fold it while it's warm. So give me a minute, I'll be right back. Okay, so that worked perfect. So yes, hit it with an iron and then while it's warm, fold it and it makes it like, makes that um, paper fabric inside really pliable and it just folds right over. So, sweet. All right. And I'm just making sure that it stays smooth in there though. Alright. So let's just set that on there to hold it down. Now for my holes I use a what is this? Cropodile I think. <laughs> yeah, Cropodile 2. And it's got um Let's see, it goes up to a little over, all right, so for the 3 16th hole, which is what we're using, it goes up to like six inches. That's not what I need. Oh, my eyelids are over here, hold on. This is the regular crop dial. This is the handheld one. 
well it's more for smaller stuff now do we want shiny or dull I want the dull ones so I need two for top and bottom and one for the middle so five total 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 all right so let's uh I guess let's go ahead and get the middle done. Oops. So I'm just using this ruler to help find the middle. And I'm sorry if you see my head. This is just a pencil that's used for sewing and stuff and it can come right off. So okay, now where I had the trouble with this one, if you watch the video where I showed it, my bottom holes were a little too far over. So I need to correct that on this one. Do, 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 do. But where I had them worked out great, and they were like three eighths of an inch in. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the big one. So with this, if you've never used one, you just slide it in. And put it on the 316th setting. And then just get it lined up. And chomp it. And that turned out pretty well perfect. All right, whoops, inside we just have a little bit of fabric left, just cut it off real, real close to the hole, like don't go pulling on it and yanking on it or stretching it, stuff like that. Now if you can find some bigger um, eyelets, that would be great. Mine are the ones that came with the original crocodile. And um, they're not that big. And so they're hard, they barely go through all these layers, but they do. So then you put it on the set eyelet layer, le or setting with this part. And I'm sorry if I go off camera, guys, but I, it's hard to maneuver here. So, and I want to keep it through so that it gets a good grip. All right. That seems to have worked pretty well. All right, so. How do I get it to where it's going to line up perfectly? For me. Try it this way. Find the center. I 
let's hope that works. Basically what I'm doing is I'm finding the center and then just going a quarter of an inch on either side of it and putting a dot. And then I just need to Make sure it's far enough in from the edge. I'm sorry guys, I'm not talking a lot. I'm just not. Finishing sentences. I just, when I'm trying to concentrate, it's hard for me to Be all like chit chatting about different things, you know. Now, see that one looks way too close. That can't be right. Hmm. That's frustrating. really frustrating. Okay, so um, I'm going to go off camera for a little bit, guys. Go get my kids some dinner, and then I'm going to try to think of a way to do this. So I'll be back. Okay, so I quickly figured out a way to do this. It's like a two to three step process, but I ended up getting this side done and I think that's about how I want it. So what I did is I folded it in half and I found in here if I put it in yeah if I put it into a certain line that's in here it went to about the sorry for my head guys but I need my head in here so I can line it up so I get it all lined up. There's a certain little mark in here that's about three eighths of an inch. I need to find out how far over I am though. I'm right about to the edge of that. All right. So. Once I got it lined up, I chomped. It won't go all the way through, but it puts marks on both sides, and then you just put it in, line it up, and chomp. Voila. Whew. It's really warm in here. Like, I am sweating. So, then just put that on to set. Put your eyelid in and set it. Nothing over top of my vent for the AC. I do not understand it. Of course, it is really hot out. We had like a heat index thing going on. Why isn't the focusing? Come on, focus. There you go. Sorry, probably me bobbing in and out from un from excuse me the camera. Um, probably causing it to freak out and not focus quite right. Okay. Holy moly, I think I did it. Looks like there's some 
There we go. So if you have some of that like no fray stuff, you could always put it around these holes because like that's the problem with these eyelets is they don't quite go all the way through, but it's not going to peel away or anything because it is being held down with all that tape and everything that's underneath. So, and by golly, George, I think I did it. All right, so now I am gonna stop the camera and I'm gonna go feed my kids and then I'll find my elastic and come back and I'll put the elastic on and then we'll be done. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so I'm back again and now we're gonna do the elastic. Yay. All right, so let's start with the inside. Hopefully I remember how to do this. So we're going to go from the inside to the outside on the top. Come back in on that side. And then go out on the bottom on the left side. And back in the bottom on the right side. And then we're just going to pull it kind of tight. Cut it. And I keep mine tight. So, um, but this stuff doesn't really fold back up over on itself. So, but I keep it pretty tight. And then I'll be honest, what I do with mine, I trim them up kind of short because I take comfort that my knot is tight enough but I put it all the way down at the bottom just before the, that hole so then it's not in the center of your stuff here all right then throw out those pieces for the outside yay so of course you take your end Fold it over, thread it through, wrap it around, I like it like that. Cut it right about there. And I'm going to pull these two ends together. Fold it back over again. Lay my hand flat in there, holding them down. Get the tightness I want, which I want my book like closed when it's like that. So I want my knot right against my fingers. There. And that should be where I needed it. Hope it did on camera. It looks like it did. All right. Okay, let's just try. So my knot isn't big enough to keep it from going through the eyelet. So I'm just tying a couple knots in there. Which looks like that's what I did on the other one as well, so. So then just pinch it, bring it through. 
voila done and then you just need to either buy or make some inserts um, I make mine because I find it to be cheaper since I have a laser printer and you know all the craft paper crafting supplies and stuff so um, I do have to make a couple for this one and then I also just received this one from um, planner planner V um, she it's a uh, P L A N N E R V I E on Instagram and then you can get to her website from there but I recently just bought this one from her so it is a little bit shorter but it's just as wide pretty much so I have to make inserts to fill this one and inserts to fill this one and see she makes hers a little different she does the holes above each other top and bottom which is fine for the way that I put mine in um, because the way I put my inserts in is I attach them in, in and out. I attach them with some elastic. So you just, they make special bands for them as well, but I just tie together some elastic. And then I just put them through like so. So it's centered on that and then do the same for this and it'll stretch. Um, let's see here. Yep, I got one more. So let's see how this works. These might be a little too big for this one because they're like going right end to end. But these are just, again, ones that I had made. And see, it just kind of, see how it's V-ing there? It just kind of pulls it down and holds it nice and tight. Yeah, I would say these um, inserts just a little bit smaller for this one. I would need to make them smaller, which is good to know. So, but that is how this video, for this video, that's how you make a faux dory without sewing, just with paper supplies. Oh, and as usual, trim that down because I don't like a whole lot of excess. and it holds perfectly. So let's uh, do, 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 do. take our inserts. See? And then we'll put this one in here. And that's four inserts. And it's still got room to expand. So this one should be able to hold a good deal. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I don't know how long it is going to be all together, but I'm sure it's going to be long. So um, thanks to those of you that stuck with me through the whole thing. And... Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Just know I'm about to go on vacation, so my replies might not be as quick, but um, I will be on the computer, so um, I will get to you as soon as I can. So thank you all for watching and have a great crafty day. Bye-bye.